Welcome to the latest video series from Built to Fish TV, Marlin Tales. Fishing for Marlin is one of my most favourite things to do. I've got some amazing footage of these fish over the years and had some incredible adventures chasing them. I wanted to put this video series together so we could show you guys some of our unseen footage and share with you some of the incredible adventures we've had chasing these fish. We're going to kick the series off with a bang with a rare West Coast Blue Marlin. So let's pick up the action about 35 nautical miles off the coast of Kafia, where a marlin has just popped up behind our teaser. This is the tale of one of my most memorable fish ever. It was late in the season, we were fishing a lot deeper than we normally would, out around the 400 metre mark. We'd caught a striped marlin sword fishing in the area the day before, and early in the morning, Scooby had seen a fish pop up behind our teaser and have a lazy swipe at it and then disappear. I'm always pretty relaxed when a fish comes into the gear and doesn't actually eat anything. Often the fish will hang with us for quite a long time before it decides to commit to the lures. So I was keeping a pretty beady eye on the lures, expecting the fish to pop up at any time. I always pull my teasers in. Once I've had a fish come into our gear, I'm running a daisy channel on each side of the boat along with the dredge, and I want the fish to only have eyes for the lures. So we cruised along for a minute or so with the teasers up, and then I decided to drop them back in the water to see if I could entice the fish back into the gear. As soon as I came out to drop the dredge back in, I looked back towards our short corner, and straight away I saw the fish pop up and have a pretty subtle bite. There he is. He's on the it popped the lure out of the clip and then for what felt like a second or two no line started coming off the reel so I guess the fish was swimming along with us but as soon as it stuck its head and shoulders out of the water I had a pretty strong suspicion that would hook the blue and then as soon as it did its first series of greyhounding jump so I knew that we had 100% hooked something that I'd been wanting to try and catch off the west coast for a long time. Holy shit dude that's a blue! Maybe? That's a fucking blue mate! That's 100% a fucking blue bro! That's a blue dude! Look at him he is! I was probably pretty guilty of sitting back and watching the show rather than clearing the gear. It was just incredible. The fish was just non-stop skipping across the surface, pushing so much water around, huge amount of white water exploding everywhere, and it gave an indication as to the size of the body of the fish. But luckily, my number one crewman, Mel, was on the job. She was clearing the gear like a pro and making up for me getting way too distracted by the fish. That's what a blue marlin looks like, Melly. Looking back, I just couldn't believe how long this fish was jumping for. It felt like it went on for minutes. Every time I looked back, the thing was splashing around, somersaulting, giant jumps, greyhounding around in circles. It was everything that makes blue marlin so exciting to hook. I guess when you've got a fish dumping that much line at that speed, you're going to end up with a lot of line in the water, and we got a pretty big belly in the line. I started to get that sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach as I watched how easy Scooby was getting line back on the reel while we were sitting stationary and there looked like there was very little tension. You often don't survive that first series of runs, so I started to feel pretty despondent. I don't like what's happening here, mate. That was a blue, 100%. 100% gone. I sort of noticed a little bit more tension start to come on the rod. It wasn't too long before Scooby 
uttered those words I was desperate to hear. Mel quickly got Scooby into a gimbal and as he was getting hooked in, he turned back to me and said something I was quite surprised to hear. You were not quite as big as you thought, I don't think, Brandon. Really? No. So here, look. What are you pointing at? You're losing. Yeah. No, go that way, yeah. yeah. I can't. The first run that the fish went on was typical of a blue marlin. It took off for the horizon at high speed, taking a whole bunch of line with it. We swung heavy metal around behind it, and the chase was on. It was pretty early on in the fight that we got our first look at the fish. I had my head hanging out of the starboard window and got to see it first and it was at that point that I realised the fish was as big as I had first thought. It's definitely takes more than a big marlin to ruffle Scooby's feathers. He's one of my favourite guys in the world to fish with. He's always super calm and collected on the boat and that often leads to good decisions being made and a lot of success when we're out fishing together. The fish behave pretty typical of a lot of the stripies we catch out west. It would spend a bit of time on the surface and we'd get some easy line back and then it would go deep. I'll point out at this point that Mel's done a lot of game fishing, she's wound in a lot of fish, but up until this point she was yet to lead a one and she decided she'd take the gloves on this fish and her first leadering attempt was going to be a baptism of fire on a west coast blue marlin. first time we had a shot at the leader I actually got Mel to grab the GoPro and get a little bit of underwater footage. Probably not my smartest move when you're dealing with a fish that only comes around once in a blue moon but I sure am glad I made the call because as you can see from this underwater footage that Mel got it's absolutely stunning. I remember looking back out of the cabin window while Mel was doing the underwater filming and getting a little bit of perspective on the fish. I could see it framed perfectly between Mel and Scooby and it was the first time I got a real sense of scale of what we were dealing with. So don't let that swivel slide through your hands. Yeah, you I was pretty keen to get a tag in the fish, so once Mel grabbed the leader after getting a few underwater shots, once it was close enough I managed to get a tag nicely placed behind the fish's dorsal fin and it was an official catch for heavy metal. Mel, 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 can't see. Don't worry about him, we're all dry. 
after we had tagged it, I made the call that I wanted to keep the fish. Killing a marlin is a tough decision for an angler to make. Personally, I don't keep a lot of fish, but for a long time I'd wanted to keep one special fish and celebrate it by getting it mounted, having it on my wall and telling the tale for years to come. My inexperience at Gaffin Marlin was quickly evident. My first shot missed and my second one hit the fish pretty low down on the body close to the tail which meant I had to hang on for dear life. I had the gaff head cleated off but because the shot wasn't a good one I wanted to use my arms as shock absorbers to try and prevent the gaff head tearing out as much as I could. It was pretty gnarly for my arms and shoulders and pulling up the fish backwards made it that much more difficult but as we got to the fish boat side it dawned on us how big the fish was and what we had achieved together. Mel and Scooby and I had done a lot of fishing together this season and for us to go out and tick off one of my major game fishing goals, just the three of us was something pretty special and getting that fish into the boot was absolutely incredible. Okay. Go. Hey watch out, here it he comes. Here it he comes. Holy shit! <laughs> Look at that mother <laughs> How's that Franny? <laughs> We're going for the wall! <laughs> well, Mel, you think how's it on fire? <laughs> Mel, how's your first good leadering job? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one we've been looking for. We're going home right now. That's a 200 kilo fish. Is it definitely a blue? 100%. Holy f An actual blue, this is what they look like. <laughs> I can't believe it. Sport of Kings. Well done, Holy f Holy f So there you go team, that's the tail of our West Coast Blue Marlin. Look at the size of that thing dude.